Okay, welcome to my first uh, build video of Hearth and Home. So here we have a lovely all-in-one building that I've used as much of the new stuff as possible whilst trying to maximize like efficiency and what have you. Um, they have messed with comfort levels and I can't figure out exactly what has changed. So the comfort levels throughout the house vary massively. Uh, it's, it's pretty high in most places. 19 is the new max, I believe, although I, I wouldn't be surprised if it changed. But it's it's generally doesn't dip below like 14 apart from like here. Like this, this corner is pretty bad. But for the most part, it generally stays around 16 to 19 range. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. But yeah, so let me show you everything that is in it. So we've got the camp, the cauldron up front with the iron cooking station. I believe you can fit another iron cooking station in here. I believe. Pause. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you have to do it without the cauldron there. But you can, I'm fairly sure, fit another one in. There are a total of eight portals. Uh, four on the bottom floor, four on the top floor. You've got your stone cutter and artisan here. You've got the fully upgraded forge here. The uh, spinning wheel and two fermenters. Then this is just for, <laughs> for comfort. Don't worry about that. Uh, fully upgraded workbench. We've got the uh, stone oven. And then if we go upstairs, we have two beds for, for comfort reasons. Uh, storage, which I will go into more detail in a second. Uh, the other two portals. Uh, a nice little balcony with a chair so you can look out at the uh, at the beautiful world. And yeah, I think that's it. Uh, and then lots of just random uh, decoration and what have you. So, storage. This is... You could have this going up pretty high and the reason i've done uh the dark iron the black metal chest over this side and then just normal chest over here is because you can really choose obviously this is way more like efficient like storage per area if, if that makes any sense but some people might not want to make these because they can be quite expensive although i don't think these are too bad compared to the reinforced chest i think they're pretty good uh so here's another like example of how you could do it as well with just the normal chest. So you can basically pick whichever one you want. That's kind of just the reason. Oh, there's a hot tub here as well, just for, for comfort stuff. But yeah, this is the, the build. Let me just show you another build I made, just for a little bonus. Um, I basically started making this one for a thumbnail and then kind of started filling it out in the attempt of making one of these videos. But I realized it's kind of too small. So here you have it. It's pretty. It's pretty cool building. It keeps getting attacked because I built it next to a tar pit for a thumbnail. But you have your storage up here, and then the same up here, and then it's got pretty much everything you need. It's just it's missing quite a bit. But yeah, here it here it is. Um, just I don't know. Figured I'd show you because it took a minute to make. Is is the complete honest reason? But yeah, it's a pretty cool looking building. Okay, so something worth noting inside the building there is no forge. Uh, refined forge or whatever this one, blast furnace uh, or charcoal kiln or windmill obviously but I don't think anyone has that in the house but there is plenty of room uh, around the base for you to like squeeze it in and what have you um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it so you could do something like this and this will just you know make sure you have everything but you might want to do like a separate building for these or something like that you can fit them in if you don't need as much storage uh, because you could get rid of these and put two of them, put, put like the blast furnace and the forge in here and then just knock out the, the floor up here and build it like a level higher and then put some chests up and put it in like that. What is attacking the house? Come on now. But yeah, here's your build. Uh, I'm going to go through how to do it now, but just um, if you just want to watch this and try and figure it out for yourself or just take ideas, just keep in mind that the roof needs these beams as support, otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't hold it up. So that's why there's the stone pillars coming all the way up through the middle and then there's beams coming out of it to support the roof because otherwise the roof uh, will fall in because I mean it's it's pretty sketchy as is like even with the beams so yeah let's get into how to build it okay so to start you really just want to like flatten out a large area and then build this which is uh, a little bit more complicated than it looks and yeah it's kind of harder than you may think so let me just give you a quick uh like run through of the easiest way to sort of do it so to get them this far off the ground because normally if you place them they're like this far right just place it onto something bang that's how you get them that far off the ground to then get them because as you, 
as you can see, like they don't. It's not just a straight line across. Like there's intersections all the way throughout. Uh, best way to do that is just go like uh, that, and then bang, and it will snap straight in. And then yeah, you just want to do it like that to mirror this. Next up, you're just going to want to throw in your walls on like the ground level. So it's literally, this is probably the easiest wall layout I've ever had, but it's literally just go around placing them. All, all of it is like the 4x2s all the way around. Um, if, you, if you literally just place this one and then follow it through, you'll be able to figure it out. And then just two 2x1s two here at the front. Uh, throw your stairs in and then you can put your doors in now if you want. Okay, and then next, just build up all the walls, and you basically want to just go up, uh, place another 4x2 on the top of the one you've already placed, and then the little 2x1s all the way around to get it to be in level with the doors. Okay, so next we're going to do the second floor. So you want to throw your stairs like so in the center up against these two 4x2 pieces, and then this is where the fun begins. Uh, the second floor is by far the most janky like part of this building and it's not close like <laughs> okay here we have the second floor i have ch uh, i'm just really struggling to explain this in a way that is 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 straightforward basically put one by ones above the front door and then fill this out with the normal sized floors then put a one by one here and then the floors like are lined up with this corner and then these floors, like the, all of these, will line up with the ones in the corner. Uh, and you want to do the one by one in this corner as well. And then all of it lines up with itself. And then you need to put one by ones on the sides uh, and on both sides. You need to put one by ones on both sides. And then when you get to the stairs, there will also be a big like L, if you like, that um, that will just be blank, and you need to fill that in. That is the easiest way I can explain it. And then when you get to the hole in the middle, to make it actually fit properly, uh, don't worry about placing the hearth just yet. Or you can if it makes this a bit easier. But basically go off the center, which, you know, you can go off the door and the, the walls. Make a 2x2 two two hole. And to do it, you'll need to place uh, the little 1x1s one on the sides here. This is the easiest way I can figure out how to, how to do it. I don't know if this, like, I don't know if looking at, at it like this makes it any easier. But... Yeah, hopefully that, that that was followable. Followable, followable. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, next we're gonna start building up the second set of walls. So just uh, yeah, go around building them. Uh, some of them just mesh in, but that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. And yeah, just go along building all all the way around. Okay, so you want to build the uh, whole second floor of walls up too high and just leave everything at the front for the balcony and we will do that later okay next up we're going to want to build up these pillars so you can do this with the actual stone pillar if you like uh it makes no difference really the only difference is that they have like holes in them which i don't love the look of but if you prefer that go ahead it's also very slightly cheaper on stone i believe although i could do math wrong basically you just want to have these two uh two by one stone walls and just mesh them into each other and yeah build them all the way up to the second floor and then yeah we'll go from there okay and then you want to build them off the second floor seven high so one two three and then when you start struggling to to jump you can just build it like this and then sort of jump on your own build and what have you until you get to seven high okay next up we're going to do the banister because you kind of need to banister to do the uh the roof so if you want to have these wooden beams all the way around or or maybe just on the front then this is where you're going to want to place them in if not you can just use the um where is it you can just use one of these up here in its place uh works the same just different of a difference of appearance and material cost and then throw these across here like that and then grab the slightly shorter one wait actually no you can just use the long one throw the long one down there and yeah that's pretty much all of it and then i threw these down here again a lot of this is unnecessary but i'm just going to show you exactly how i did it and then if you want to make tweaks feel free and then also just throw an extra pole on top of this one and we will get started on the roof 
Okay, so next we're going to do the roof. And as you can see, the roof is just one big rectangle. Uh, the reason for this is because um, of these overhanging bits, I really wanted to try and do some sort of like cross roof, like cross shaped roof. But because these walls are like one and a half, there's no half roof. And these roofs and these roofs, when you try and mesh them together to like cut right, create one and a half, doesn't work. It, it looks stupid. There's like a bit poking out. So yeah, so we have this little overhang, which isn't even a bad thing. It's just uh, probably slightly less interesting than the way I would have liked to have done it. But yeah, I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so you basically should start with something like this. Uh, there's no overlapping pieces here, so it's fairly straightforward. But you basically want to just build a cross on each side until the two corners meet. Uh, and yeah, this this one hangs off the edge a little bit. Uh, and yeah, so do that and then throw in the corner piece on each four corners. Okay, and then the balcony, you basically just want to have... The, so fill in this bit, which I didn't fill in before. Uh, grab the 26 degree roof ridge and just attach that off the uh, bottom of the the roof, and then add a slow at uh, the six, 26 degree angled roof on to the end of that. You can also just add another one of these here if you want slightly more of a view. It's up to you, whichever one you prefer, really. Okay, and then once you've filled in all of that, you want to go around with the uh, 26 degree roof, the less sl uh, less slanted one, and just do another a layer, if you will, ignoring the corners for now. Okay, and then using the 26 degree uh, corners, just fill that in, and yeah, you're like halfway done with the roof. Next, grab one of these uh, long horizontal beams, and basically you want to aim at the roof, which one is it? This one. For some reason, one of them, if you like, if I aim here and place it, it doesn't actually connect. No idea why. It doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, you basically want to do that on all the... No, yeah, you have to aim at the roof. Come on, I just literally just went through this. Uh, and just do that and go around all the way uh, on the sides. I think it's the inner, the inner ones. Yeah, so aim for the insides. And then also you want to do them uh, the other way. But basically, this is a lot easier. You can just snap it off the center uh, ceiling on like the, the second layer. And then if you just build that whole beam all the way across, four across makes it line up perfectly. And now your roof's gonna be all nice and stable. Okay, layer number three of the ceiling is once again the 45 degree roof. And then final layer is back to the uh, 26 degree roof. Okay, and then for the actual uh, like chimney, if you like, you just want to build up. Sick, my hammer broke. <laughs> uh, you just want to build up one of these full four meter poles off the intersection of these two beams, uh, and then that will give you the tiny little the little beam, but looking nice. And then just throw one of these like this, and then grab your 26 meter roof ridge. Build that all the way across, and then break that. And there you go. That's the roof done. The roof is uh, beautiful. I love the new roof design. Absolutely gorgeous, especially compared to the only other option we had before. But there we go. That's that's the core building done. So I'm going to go through some of the extra like uh, windows and stuff, and then we will get on to the inside. Add some extra swag to your entrance. Two by one, one meter block, stone archway. Bang. If you want windows like this, you basically just want to knock out these two walls, build uh, the little stone ones up on the sides, throw the glass in. For, for that one, I have put the crystal on both sides. Uh, come on. So, yeah, this is what it looks like on the outside. This is what it looks like on the inside. Um, yeah, if you, if you put crystal on just one side, it kind of looks stupid from the other side. So if you only care what your base looks like from the inside, just put it on the inside. If you only care about what it looks like from the outside, put it on the outside. Because crystal is kind of a pain in the ass to get because no one wants to be hunting down stone golems all day long. But here we are. Basically, you just want to throw all the crystal down, put in the, uh, the uh, dartwood poles, and then put one in the middle. This is the worst because for some reason you can't uh, place stuff on glass. So you have to like aim for the top of the wooden pole and there's like a very small window that allows you to place it but once you get it it looks like that 
Okay, another thing you're gonna wanna do, fill these gaps in. Not only will these add support to your roof, it will make it less weird that there's just a random hole in the roof. Okay, now for the internal stuff. I'm gonna start with the actual important stuff and then do uh, all the, like, um, stuff that gives rest in buffs afterwards. So, start by placing your cauldron down. Bang. Then you wanna add your pots and pans. Throw them up here. Then, you spice rack, that on this side, off the ceiling. Bang, max level cauldron. Next up, put your your stone oven here, match it with the, snap it to the, the stone pillar. Bang, workbench, put it down here, by the window. Chopping block, on the side. Tanning rack, on the other side. Add, uh, which I'm not gonna try and pronounce, try and mesh it into the wall over here somehow. Bang, this thing just goes up here. There you go, max level workbench. Next is the forge, so throw the forge down. Throw, throw your forge bellows as close as possible to it. These little things, put them on this side. Grinding wheel, put it over here in the corner. Tool rack, up here. Anvil, in here. And then your bucket is a bit awkward because there's no room. So just put that here. Uh, if you really want to, you can also build um, one of these, like up here or something, and then put the bucket on that, or the anvils, and then put the bucket there. Either works, max level forge. If you're playing in creative, you would already have to throw this down somewhere, but uh, this is where I keep mine. Just tuck it in as close to the wall as possible, and then artisan table on the other side, get that in as far as possible. Bang. Like I said before, these four don't fit inside the building, so if you want them somewhere, like either make a new building, throw them outside. There's there's four little like cubbies, which kind of makes perfect sense to throw these four items in. But yeah, do whatever you want with them. Spinning wheel over here, facing this way. And then you want your two fermenters under the stairs. So just get them like so. And then you can even fit three in if you're crazy enough. The obliterator kind of sometimes fits in the house. Uh, so feel free to throw that down somewhere if you if you want it, but almost definitely throw it outside. As for the little balcony around the, the campfire, you just want to throw a wood beam, the small 1x1 meter wooden beam, and then the dart log all the way around. The reason why I showed you in that building was because when I placed my pillars, I wasn't paying much attention and placed one way too far in. So it kind of looks terrible. So yeah, when you're placing your beams, uh, placing your pillars pay more attention than I did. Also, using uh, the new diagonal core wood log, we can throw these up here to make the stairs look a little bit extra funky. Also do this into the wall, even though you can't really see it in the wall, it makes it look a little bit nicer, especially here at the top where you have the two bits that kind of poke out a little bit. Okay, so then we want to throw down the bed, so you want just one bed here and one bed over here. This is for, for comfort. You only really need one bed if you're not too bothered. And then I also have a throne in next to the two beds and one here, which is looking out, which is pretty cool. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to build up your chest. So if you're using black metal chests, you just wanna throw down uh, six, maybe seven, if you can fit them in, and then throw down one of these little one by one floors. Basically just line it up like as like close to the top, but not too close. Uh, and then have the left side of it line up with the center of this uh, wall. So like that, and then bang, just build it all the way across, and then place your chests on top. And if you're doing it with the little ones, the, the normal chests, you basically just wanna have two uh, quite close to each other, leave a little gap, two quite close to each other. This is a bit, a bit messed up, but you get the idea. Uh, and then throw a beam in the middle and then you can easily organize and sort everything you would like Next is the portals. So just throw uh, two portals like down like that Same on this side. Don't forget to name them. Probably don't jump down here if you've uh, lit the fire already because You will get hurt and damage your hearth, but same on this side down here uh, down here even Just do more portals and then bang we have eight portals in the house just like that Nice. Next is going to be all the comfort stuff. So I'm going to show you sort of the basics and then if you want to go nuts with it and just add loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff, be my guest because obviously comfort just come like the more stuff you add, the better it gets. So, you know, I try and do it to a, like a level of consistency uh, or like just something that is achievable in an actual game and not in cheat mode. 
but yeah, just sort of copy this to a degree and change whatever you want to fit you better. But you basically want to have your carpets down here and then some form of carpet back here as well just to like maximize your coverage. And then if you want, you can have carpets on these two sides as well. And then do the same up here, except if you just, if you copy me exactly, just do, yeah, do it exactly how I'm doing it, basically. Because uh, this will maximize your, your carpet coverage, your carpet resting coverage. And then up here, you want to throw a table down with uh, the chair. The chair doesn't matter. This is just for, for looks. This counts as a, a chair. So the other one doesn't do anything. And then here, you're going to want to throw your uh, hot tub. Bang. Make sure you have wood in it. Otherwise, it doesn't actually activate any sort of resting buff. You have to have wood in it and have it on to actually gain the two uh, rested or resting like points that it gives you. Next up, throw your banners up. Put two on these two pillars and then go downstairs and do the same down here. And that should trigger that all the way across the base. And then if you are near a main pole or if you're just in cheat mode, throw down two at the front and then, Jesus Christ, I have no idea what that was. And then one at the back and that should maximize your coverage. And then that is all of the rested stuff placed down. Next, we're gonna go over the lighting. Okay, so generally you just want to scatter these sconces about, but I'll show you exactly where I place all of mine if you want to copy this to the exact uh, millimeter, I guess is what I was going to say. Bang, and there you have it. Nice and quick, doesn't take that long, obviously. Uh, if you're in normal survival, then collecting the stone and stuff will take a lot longer. And especially the tar, because as far as I'm aware, there is no super easy, convenient way to gather lots of tar. And I think each one of these roof pieces, like, costs, costs one each, yeah. So, yeah, that could get a little expensive. If you want to do the pattern all the way around the house, like I showed you at the start, like this whole this whole dark wood log pattern is what I'm talking about. If you want to do that, then just sort of copy this. I, I basically just went off everywhere that it snapped easily and without sort of just overloading it. So yeah, I'll give you a quick once round. So if you want to do that, you can copy it. But I'm, I, the reason I'm not showing you is because I would imagine most people aren't because each one of these poles is one tar and there's probably like e easily a hundred here and tar is not the easiest thing to come by. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I also didn't show you the cartography table because half the people aren't going to use that. But if you do want to use a cartography table, just throw it down here. Um, and yeah, there you go. It's uh, a lovely little house. I love the roof. I love the roof. It's my favorite thing about this uh, building. If you want to add stuff like uh, you know um, like farms for for crops or for animals, feel free to do so. If you want to add like a, a fence around it if you're in like the plains and you want some protection once again feel free to do so but yeah here you go take take and leave whatever you want from this base just uh something to give you some ideas on some of the new hearth and home build ideas i also didn't use unfortunately i didn't use any of the dividers so if you want to try and fit these in somewhere go ahead because they are cool looking I just didn't figure out anywhere really good to put them in this base. They also work really well as windows. So if you don't want to use the crystal downstairs, uh, feel free to just substitute this in and place these here instead. Because, yeah, they look pretty cool. But, yeah, I did not mean to do that. But there you go. That's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. It does help out. And, yeah, feel free to check out my Everything You Need to Know About Hearth and Home video if you're not fully up to date. And check out my One Life series. Even though it was before Hearth and Home, it was still absolutely awesome. So, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.